टेन कैंटो ट्वेंटी फोर कैंटो आज तो प्रॉपर का क्लास है छे पड़ो टेन ट्वेंटी फोर छे अंडरस्टैंडिंग ट्रांसलेशन टेक्स्ट सिक्स वेन पीपल इन दिस वर्ल्ड परफॉर्म एक्टिविटीज Sometimes they understand what they are doing, and sometimes they don't. Those who know what they are doing achieve success in their work, whereas hmm. ignorant people do not. Perfect. Hmm. The Lord here informs his father that people should perform a particular ceremony or activity only after thoroughly understanding it through discussion with friends. we should not be blind followers of tradition if a person doesn't even know what he is doing how can he be successful in his work this essentially is the lord's argument in this verse since shri krishna as a young child of nanda would naturally be expected to show enthusiasm for his father's religious activities it was the father's duty to give the son a thorough explanation of the ceremony Text 7 translation such being this case this ritualistic endeavor of yours should be clearly explained to me it is a ceremony based on scriptural injunction or simply a custom of ordinary society text 8 translation nand maharaj replied the great lord indra is the controller of the rain the clouds are his personal representatives and they directly provide rain water which gives happiness and sustenance to all creatures for for without clean rain water the earth could not possibly provide food or drink for anyone nor could there be cleanliness thus it would be difficult to overestimate the value of rain text 9 translation not only we my dear son but also many other men worship him the lord and the master of the rain giving clouds we offer him grain and other paraphernalia of worship produced through his own discharge in the form of rain for for nanda maharaj patiently tried to explain the facts of life to his young son shri krishna but in fact nanda and all the residents of vrindavan would learn an astonishing lesson as explained in this chapter text 10 by accepting the remnants of sacrifices performed to indra people sustain their lives and accomplish the three fold aims of religiosity economic development and sense gratification thus lord indra is the agent responsible for the fruitive success of industrious people for for one might object that people sustain themselves by farming industry and so on but as previously mentioned all human and non human endeavors depend on food and drink which cannot be produced without ample rain by the word tri varga nanda further points out that the prosperity achieved through sacrifice for indra is meant not merely for sense gratification 
but also for religiosity and economic development. Unless people are well fed, it is difficult for them to execute their duties and without performance of duty, it is very difficult to be religious. Text 11 This religious principle is based on sound tradition. Anyone who rejects it out of lust, enmity, fear or greed will certainly fail to achieve good fortune. Purport. If a person neglects his religious duties because of lust, envy, fear or greed, his life will never be brilliant or perfect. Text 12 Shukadeva Goswami said, When Lord Keshava, Krishna, heard the statements of his father Nanda and other senior residents of Viraja, he addressed his father as follows to arouse anger in Lord Indra. Purport. Srila Sridhar Swami explains that Lord Krishna's intention was not simply to insult a demigod, but rather to knock down the great mountain of false pride that had arisen within the Lord's tiny servant, who was supposed to represent the Lord as Indra. By lifting over the hill, Lord Krishna would thus initiate a blissful annual festival called Govardhana Puja and he would further enjoy the pleasant pastime of dwelling for several days beneath the hill with all his loving devotees. Text 13 Lord Krishna said, It is by the force of karma that a living entity takes birth, and it is by karma alone that he meets his destruction. His happiness, distress, fear, and sense of security all arise as the effects of karma. Purport. Lord Krishna minimized the importance of the demigods by speaking the philosophy known as Karmavad or Karma Mimamsa, which basically is atheism with a belief in re reincarnation. According to this philosophy, there are subtle laws of nature that reward or punish us according to how we act. Quote, As you sow, so shall you reap. In a future life, one reaps the fruits of his present work, and this is the sum and substance of reality. Lord Krishna, being God himself, could hardly be a serious proponent of this mediocre philosophy. In the role of a young boy, he was simply teasing his pure devotees by preaching it. Sri Jeeva Goswami points out that Lord Krishna was thinking, quote, why are these eternal associates of mine appearing as my father and other relatives and friends so caught up in this worship of Indra? Thus, although the Lord's main purpose was to take away the false pride of Indra, he also wanted to remind his eternal devotees that they need not divert their attention to other so-called gods, since in fact his devotees were already living with the supreme absolute truth the Almighty Lord Himself. Text 14 Even if there is some supreme controller who awards all others the results of their activities, he must also depend upon a performer's engaging in activity. After all, there is no question of being the bestower of fruitive results unless fruitive activities have actually been performed. Purport. Here, Lord Krishna argues that if there is a supreme controller, he must depend on a performer of activity to reciprocate with and must, therefore, also be subject to the laws of karma, being obliged to award happiness and distress to conditioned souls according to the laws of good and evil. This superficial argument neglects the obvious point that the laws of nature that prescribe the good and bad results of pious and impious acts are themselves creations of the all-good Supreme Lord. Being the creator and sustainer of these laws, the Lord is not subject to them. Furthermore, the Lord is not dependent on the work of the conditioned souls, since he is satisfied and complete within himself. Out of his all-merciful nature, he awards the results appropriate to our activities. That which we call destiny 
fate or karma is an elaborate and subtle system of rewards and punishments meant for gradually encouraging conditioned souls to evolve to the stage of perfect consciousness which is their original constitution nature. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has so dexterously formulated and applied the laws of material nature governing punishment and reward for human behavior that the living being is discouraged from sin and encouraged towards goodness without any suffering and insignificant, any insignificant interference with his free will as an eternal soul. In contrast to the material nature, the Lord exhibits his eternal essential nature in the spiritual world, where he reciprocates the eternal love of his pure devotees. Such loving affairs are based completely on the mutual freedom of the Lord and his devotees, not on a mechanical reciprocity of coinciding selfish interests. The Supreme Lord, assisted by his pure devotees, repeatedly offers the conditioned souls of this world the opportunity to give up their bizarre attempt to exploiting the material universe and go back home, back to Godhead, for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge. Considering all Ante these Ante. points, the atheistic arguments given here by the Lord Krishna in a playful mood are not to be taken seriously. Translation of text 15. Living beings in this world are forged to experience the consequences of their own particular previous work. Since Lord Indra cannot in any way change the destiny of human beings, which is born of their own nature, why should people worship him? Lord Krishna's argument here is not a negotiation of free will. If one accepts the existence of karma as a system of laws awarding reactions for our present activities, then we ourselves, according to our nature, will decide our future. Our happiness and distress in this life have already been adju adjudicated and fixed according to our previous activities, and not even the demigods can change that. They must award us the prosperity or poverty, sickness or health, happiness or distress due us by our previous work. However, we still retain the freedom to select a pious or impious mode of activity in this life, and the choice we make will determine our future suffering and enjoyment. For example, if I was pious in my last life, in this life the demigods may award me great material wealth, but I am free to spend my riches for good and for bad purposes and my choice will determine my future life. Thus, although no one can change the karmic results due him in this life, everyone still remains, retains his free will, by which he determines what his future situation will be. Lord Krishna's argument here is quite interesting. However, it neglects the overriding consideration that we are all eternal servants of God, and must satisfy him by all that we do. Text 16. Every individual is under the control of his own conditioned nature, and thus he must follow the nature. This entire universe, with all its demigods, demons, and human beings, is based on the conditioned nature of the living entities. Purport. Lord Krishna here elaborates upon the argument given in the previous words. Since everything depends on Sabhava or one's conditioned nature, why bother worshiping Why bother worshiping God or demigods? This argument would be sublime if Sabhava or conditioned nature were all powerful. But unfortunately it is not. There is a supreme controller and we must worship him as Lord Krishna will emphatically reveal in this chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. For now, however, he is content to tease his relatives. X17. Because it is karma that causes all conditioned living entity to accept and then give up different high and low grade material bodies. This karma is his enemy, friend and neutral witness. 
his spiritual master and controlling lord purport even the demigods are bound and limited by the laws of karma that indra himself is subordinate to the laws of karma is explicitly stated in the brahma samhita 5.54 yastvendra gopam athavendram aho sa karma bandhan rupa phalam bhajanam atmanokti the supreme lord govinda awards all creatures that appropriate results of their work this is as true for mighty indra the lord of the material heavens as it is for the germ called indra gopa the bhagavad gita 7.20 also states kamai stai stai hrita gyana prapadyanti anya devata only those who have lost their intelligence because of various material desires surrender unto demigods rather than worship the supreme lord in fact the demigods cannot award benefits to anyone independently as stated by lord krishna in the gita mayeva vihitan hitan all benefits are ultimately issued by the lord himself thus it is not altogether incorrect to say that demigod worship is useless since even the demigods are under the laws of karma in fact this is the case but lord krishna the supreme absolute truth is not subordinate to the laws of karma rather he can independently offer or withhold his favor this is confirmed in this verse from the brahma samhita quoted above the third line of which is karmani nidhati kintu cha bhakti bhajam quote the supreme lord burns up all accumulated karma of those engaged in his loving service not only is lord krishna above the laws of material action and reaction but he can immediately dissolve these laws for anyone who satisfies him through loving service thus the almighty god is supreme in absolute freedom and by surrendering to him we can escape the bonds of karma and stop accepting their dismal rule as supreme text 18 therefore one should seriously worship work itself a person should remain in the position corresponding to his nature and should perform his own duty indeed that by which we may live nicely is really our worshipable duty purport lord krishna here proposes the modern if absurd philosophy that our work or occupation is really god and that we should therefore simply worship our work upon close scrutiny we observe that our work is nothing more than the interaction of the material body with the material nature as lord krishna himself states in a more serious mood in bhagavad gita 3.28 guna guneshu vartanta karma mamsa philosophy accepts that good activities in this life will give us a better next life if this is true there must be some type of conscious soul different from the body and if that is the case why should a transcendental soul worship the interaction of the temporary body with material nature if the words sampujet karma here means that one should worship the laws of karma governing our activities then one may as astutely ask what is means to worship laws and indeed what might be the origin of such laws and who is maintaining them to say that laws have created or are maintaining the world is meaningless propos- propositions since there is nothing about the nature of a law that indicates it could generate the existential existential situation it is supposed to govern in fact worship is meant for krishna himself and this real conclusion will be clearly revealed in this chapter text 19 if one thing is actually sustaining our life but we take shelter of something else how can we achieve any real benefit we should be like an unfaithful woman we would be like an unfaithful woman who can never achieve any actual benefit by consorting with her paramour for what the lord shema means actually prosperity not merely the accumulation of money here lord krishna boldly argues that 
just as a woman can never achieve actual dignity or enlightenment from an illicit lover the residents of vrindavan will never be happy by neglecting the real source of their prosperity and worshiping indra instead according to shri rajiv goswami the audacity that child krishna displayed before his father and other elders should be understood as an exhibition of transcendental anger aroused when he saw his eternal devotees worshiping an insignificant demigod text 20 The Brahmana maintains his life by studying the and teaching the Vedas. The members of royal order by protecting the earth, the Vaishya by trade, and the Shudra by serving the higher, twice-born caste classes. <coughs> After glorifying karma or work, Lord Krishna now explains. what he means by prescribed duties born of one's nature he was not referring to any physical activity but rather to the religious duties prescribed in the varnashrama or vedic social system text 21 the occupational duties of the vaishyas are conceived in four divisions farming commerce cow production and money lending out of these we as a community are always engaged in cow production text 22 the causes of creation maintenance and destruction are the three modes of nature namely goodness passion and ignorance in particular the modes of passion creates this universe and through sexual combination causes it to be causes it to become full of variety purport anticipating the possible objection that a livelihood based on cows certainly depend on lord indra who supplies rain lord krishna here introduces a mechanistic theory of existence known as atheistic sankhya the tendency to attribute exclusive causality to the apparently mechanistic conceptions of nature is an old tendency indeed 5000 years ago lord krishna referred to a doctrine already well known in the human society text 23 impelled by the material modes of passion the clouds pour down their rain everywhere and by this rain all creatures gain their sustenance what has great indra to do with this arrangement purport lord krishna continues his mechanistic explanation of existence concluding Mahendra Kim Karishyati, quote, who needs the great Indra since the rain sent by the clouds, which in turn are impelled by the modes of passion, is actually producing everyone's food, unquote. The word Sarvatah indicates that the clouds magnanimously send their rain even on the ocean, rocks, and barren land, where there is no apparent necessity for such sweet water. Text twenty four, my dear father. our home is not in the cities or towns or villages being forest dwellers we always live in the forest and on the hills purport lord krishna here points out that the residents of vrindavan should recognize their relationship with govardhan hill and with the forests of vrindavan and not worry about a distant demigod like indra having concluded his argument lord krishna makes a radical pro- proposal in the following words text 25 therefore may a sacrifice for the pleasure of the cows the brahmanas and govardhan hill govardhan hill begin with all the paraphernalia collected for worshiping indra let this sacrifice be performed instead purport lord krishna is famous as go brahmana hita the well wishing friend of cows and the brahmanas Lord Krishna specifically included the local brahmanas in his proposal because he is always devoted to those who are devoted to the godly Vedic culture. Text twenty six. Translation. Let many different kinds of food be cooked, from the sweet rice to vegetable soups. Many kinds of fancy cakes, both baked and fried, should be prepared. 
and all the available milk products should be taken for the sacrifice purpose. The word super indicates bean broth and also liquid vegetables. Thus, to celebrate the Govardhan Puja, Lord Krishna called for hot preparations such as soup, cold preparations like sweet rice, and all types of milk products. Text 27. The Brahmanas who are learned in the Vedic mantras must properly invoke the sacrificial fires. Then, you should feed the priests with nicely prepared food and reward them with cows and other gifts. Purport. According to Srila Sridhar Swami, Lord Krishna instructed his father and other residents of Vrindavan in the technical details of, his, of this Vedic sacrifice to assure the quality of the sacrifice and also to inspire Nanda and others with the faith in the concept of such a sacrifice. Thus, the Lord mentioned that there must be orthodox brahmanas, regular sacrificial fires and proper distribution of charity. And things were to be done in the order given by the Lord. Text 28 After giving the appropriate food to everyone else, including such fallen souls as dogs and dog eaters, you should give grass to the cows and then present your respectful offerings to Govardhan Hill. Translation Text 29 After everyone has eaten to his satisfaction, you should all dress and decorate yourselves handsomely, smear your bodies with sandalwood paste, and then circumambulate the cows, the brahmanas, the sacrificial fires, and Govardhan Hill. Purport. Lord Krishna wanted all the human beings and even the animals to eat nice Bhagavad Prasadam, sanctified foods offered to the Lord. To enthuse his act, to enthuse his relatives with a festive mood, he requested them to dress beautifully with fine clothes and ornaments and to refresh their bodies with luxurious sandalwood paste. The essential activity, however, was the circumambulation of the holy brahmanas, cows, sacrificial fires, and especially Govardhan Hill. Text 30. This is my idea, O Father, and you may carry it out if it appeals to you. Such a sacrifice will be very dear to the cows, the brahmanas, and the Gordon Hill, and also to me. Purport. Whatever is pleasing to the brahmanas, the cows, and the Supreme Lord Himself is auspicious and beneficial for the entire world. Spiritually blind, modern people do not understand this and instead adopt a scientific approach to life that is rapidly destroying the entire earth. Text 31. Shukadeva Goswami said, Lord Krishna, who is himself powerful time, desired to destroy the false pride of Lord Indra. When Nanda and the other senior men of Vrindavan heard Sri Krishna's statement, they accepted his words as proper. Text 32 33. Translation. The cowherd community then did all the Madhusud did all that Madhusudana had suggested. They arranged for the Brahmanas to recite the auspicious Vedic mantras, and using the paraphernalia that had been intended for Indra's sacrifice, they presented offerings to Govardhan Hill and the Brahmanas with reverential respect. They also gave grass to the cows. Then placing the cows, bulls, and calves in front of them, they circumambulated Govardhan. Support. The residents of Vrindavan were simply devoted to Lord Krishna. That was the sum and substance of their existence. Being the Lord's eternal associates, they were ultimately not concerned with Lord Indra or ritualistic sacrifice, and they were certainly not interested in the me mechanistic philosophy that Krishna had just spoken to them. They simply loved Krishna, and out of intense affection, they did exactly what he had requested. Their simple loving mentality was not small mindedness or ignorance. Since they were devotee, they were devoted to the Supreme Absolute Truth, who contains within himself all existence. Thus the residents of Vrindavan constantly experience the highest essential truth underlying all other truths, and that is Sri Krishna himself, the cause of all causes, 
and that which sustains the existence of all that exists. The residents of Vrindavan were overwhelmed in loving service to that supreme absolute truth. Therefore, they were the most fortunate, most intelligent, and most pragmatic of all the living beings. Translation of text 34. As the beautifully ornamented cowherd ladies followed along, riding on wagons drawn by oxen, they sang the glories of Lord Krishna, and their songs mingled with the Brahmana chanting of benedictions. X35. Krishna then assumed an unprecedented, huge form to instill faith in the cowherd men, declaring, I am Govardhan Mountain. He ate the abundant offerings. Purport. In the chapter 24 of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Srila Prabhupada writes, When everything was complete, Krishna assumed a great transcendental form and declared to the inhabitants of Vrindavan that he was himself Govardhan Hill in order to conceive the devotees that Govardhan Hill and Krishna himself are identical. Then Krishna began to eat all the foods offered there. The identity of Krishna and Govardhan Hill is still honored and great devotees take rocks from Govardhan Hill and worship them exactly as they worship the deity of Krishna in the temples. The followers of Krishna consciousness movement may therefore collect small rocks or pebbles from Govardhan Hill and worship them at home because this worship is as good as deity worship. Unquote. Lord Krishna has induced the residents of Vrindavan to assume a significant risk on his behalf. He convinced them to neglect a sacrifice to what is after all the powerful government of the universe and to worship a hill called Gordhana instead. The Kaukar community did all this simply out of love for Krishna and now to convince them that their decision was correct. Lord Krishna appeared in an unprecedented, huge transcendental form and demonstrated that he himself was more than here. Text 36. Translation. Together with the people of Raja, the Lord bowed down to this form of more than hill. Thus, in effect of offering obeisances to himself, then he said, quote, just see how this hill has appeared in person and bestowed mercy upon us. It is clear from this verse that Lord Krishna has expanded himself and was appearing in this normal form among the festival goers of the Vrindavan while simultaneously manifesting himself as the great form of Gordhan Hill. Thus, in his form as a child, Krishna led the residents of Vrindavan in bowing down to his new incarnation as Gordhan Hill. And to all he pointed out the great mercy bestowed by his divine form of Govardhan. Lord Krishna's amazing transcendental activities were certainly in keeping with the festive atmosphere. Text 37 This Govardhan hill, assuming any form he wishes, will kill any residents of the forest who neglect him. Therefore, let us pray our obeisances, let us pay our obeisances to him for the safety of ourselves and our cows. Purport. Kama Rupi indicates that the form of Gordhan can, can manifest as poisonous snakes, wild animals, falling rocks and so on, all of which are competent to kill a human being. According to Sri Sri Swami, the Lord presented six theoretical points in this chapter. First, that karma alone is sufficient to determine one's destiny. Second, that our conditioned nature is the supreme controller. Third, that the modes of nature are supreme controller. Fourth, that the supreme lord is simply a dependent aspect of karma. Five, that he is under the control of karma. And sixth, that one's occupation is actually worshipable deity. The Lord presented these arguments not because he believed them but rather because he wanted to stop the impending sacrifice to Indra and divert it to himself in the form of Govardhan Hill. 
In this way, the Lord desired to agitate that falsely proud demigod. Text 38 The members of the Kalhat community, having thus been inspired by Lord Vasudeva to properly execute the sacrifice to Govardhan Hill, the cows and the brahmanas, returned with Lord Krishna to their village, Viraja, for pot. Although the Govardhan Puja was performed in a blissful and successful way, the matter was hardly finished. Lord Indra is, after all, tremendously powerful, and he received the news of the Govardhan